Okay, so we're going to start section uh, one of chapter 37, which is the circulatory system. So our circulatory system um, is works very closely with our respiratory system. Circulatory system has everything to do with your blood, and your respiratory system has everything to do with um, breathing. So these two systems, they work together to supply all your cells with the nutrients and oxygen that they need to stay alive. Okay, and the main function of the circulatory system is um, to allow um, blood to basically circulate throughout the whole body. And so the main um, parts are your heart, your blood vessels, and of course the blood. Um, your heart helps to um, basically pump all of this blood. So it's enclosed in a protective sac of tissue called the pericardium. Okay, and in the walls of the heart, the two layers of epithelial and connective tissue, they form a thick layer of muscle called myocardium. And we talked about that with the muscular tissue when we were talking about cardio, um, cardiac muscle. It has to be really, really thick for the heart, right? And it's called my myocardium, sorry. Um, the contractions of this myocardium actually helps to pump your blood. Okay, and then there's this thing called a septum, which actually divides the heart into two sides. And the uh, blood goes in and out um, of those two sides. And basically what it does, the septum dividing part, it helps to um, prevent any mixing of blood that's been oxygenated or not oxygenated. Now, the heart has a lot of different parts, and they play a very important roles. So we have... Um, a vena cava okay these are superior and inferior vena cava and what the superior vena cava does is it helps to um, bring oxygen poor blood from the upper part of the body okay in and into the right atrium so the um, superior vena cava empties into the right atrium what the inferior vena cava does is it brings oxygen poor blood from the lower part of the body to um, the right atrium so you're getting oxygen poor blood from both the upper and lower part of the body into the right atrium of the heart, okay? Then we have our pulmonary artery, okay? And what that does is it brings oxygen poor blood from each of the lungs to the left atrium, okay? So now all of our oxygen poor blood from lungs is coming in, okay? Then we have our pulmonary valve right here, okay? And what that does, it basically, it prevents blood from pumping back, Okay, it's like a little latch, and it keeps the blood from going back into the artery. Okay, and basically it prevents any black backflow. Okay, then we have um, our tricuspid valve right here that separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. Okay, and what that does is it prevents um, backflow of blood between the atrium and the ventricle. And then we have our mitral valve, okay, sometimes called the bicuspid valve, and that helps prevent a backflow of blood from your left atrium and your left ventricle, okay? Then next we have um, the next two big portions, which is your aorta, okay, and then your aortic valve, okay? Now, what the aortic valve does here, it helps... Um, to prevent blood from flowing back from the left ventricle after it's entered the aorta. So what the aorta actually does is it brings oxygen-rich blood from the left ventricle to the actual body. So um, you could just think of it this way. Aorta takes everything away, okay, from the heart to the rest of the body because it's oxygen-rich, okay, and then all these other valves, your pulmonary your valves, your vena cava, they bring oxygen-poor uh, blood to the heart. So then it goes through the heart, then out back to the lungs. So your heart is made up of four main chambers. You have your two atria and your two ventricles. And again, it's separated by a septum. Your upper chambers are your atrium and your lower chambers are your ventricles. Okay, and again, we have our um, tricuspid valve on the right and your bicuspid valve on your left that helps to separate your atria and your ventricles. Okay. And then um, circulation to the blood. I kind of talked about this already. So the flaps of your connective tissue, which are called your valves, help to prevent backflow so that your blood doesn't go backwards, okay, in a way. There's a constant direction of flow to it, and these valves help to prevent any backflow. If there's backflow, there could be a lot of issues and could actually be dangerous for the person. So as it exits the, the ventricles, um, the, these valves again help to prevent that backflow. And blood that leaves the left ventricle enters the aorta. 
and then the aorta sends it through the body so that it's oxygenated and then back to the heart. Okay, so within your circulatory uh, system, you have your pulmonary circulation and your systemic um, circulation. Now your pulmonary circulation, that's one pathway and what it is, it's between your heart and your lungs. So in the lungs, you have carbon dioxide which leaves the body and oxygen that's absorbed. So oxygen rich blood returns to the heart through your pulmonary circulation. Your systemic um, circulation is the opposite of that. So after returning from the lungs, your oxygen rich blood is pumped to the rest of your body. Um, so here um, you can see like how the different um, um, parts of your heart pump blood to and from your lungs into your body. So the circulatory system is um, divided into those two pathways, which is your pulmonary, again, um, which carries your blood between the heart and the lungs. And it's your systemic, which carries blood between your heart and the actual rest of your body, okay? So here would be your pulmonary because it's going between your lungs and your heart. And then here would be your systemic because it's going from your head and your arms to the heart then to your legs. Your heartbeat is basically tells you how much blood is being pumped. Um, each contraction um, be uh, begins in the SA node, the sinoatrial node, in the right atrium, because that's where it all kind of begins. So because these cells start the wave of muscle contraction between the heart, these are called the pacemakers, okay? And some people who have problems with um, their heart and actually have fake pacemakers put in so that they're their heart can pump the blood as it needs to. So when the network in the atria contracts, blood in the atria flows into the ventricles, the ventricles then contract and blood comes out of the heart. Okay, so this is that SA node where it all starts off. So the impulse spreads from the SA node to the network of fibers in the atria, okay? Then the impulses um, are then picked up by a bundle of fibers called the AV, the atrioventricular node, and carried to the network of fibers in the ventricles. Okay, so the signals to contract um, spreads from the SA node to the cardiac muscle of the cells of the atria, and that causes the atria to actually contract. So um, the impulse is then, how I said, um, it's picked up by the AV node, then transmitted to the muscle fibers, and then that causes that contraction. Then we have our blood vessels. You have your arteries, your capillaries, and your veins. Okay, and those are three ways that your blood moves. Okay, so your arteries um, are large vessels, and they carry blood from your heart, okay, to your actual body. Okay, so except for your pulmonary artery, all of the arteries are oxygen rich. Your um, pulmonary artery, sorry, is um, oxygen poor. Okay, your arteries have very thick walls, and there's a lot of blood flowing through your arteries. Um, your capillaries are much smaller, okay, they're actually the smallest of all your blood vessels, okay, their walls are only about a cell thick, so you can imagine how tiny that is, okay, it's very, very narrow, so the capillaries bring nutrients and oxygen to the tissues and absorb carbon dioxide and other wastes. Then lastly, we have our veins. These are the ones that you can actually typically see through your skin, and what they do is they carry blood back to the heart. Okay, the veins are thinner than your arteries, but they are still thicker than your capillaries. And then the walls of your veins have connective and um, smooth muscle. So here again, I was talking about you can actually see your blood vessels sometimes. So large veins contain valves that keep blood moving towards the heart. And many veins are located near and between the skeletal muscles. And so the contraction of your skeletal muscle actually helps to move the blood in your veins towards your heart because it needs to contract to basically push that blood up pretty much against gravity. Okay, and then when we're talking about your blood pressure, typically you want it to be 120 over 80. Okay, so what your blood pressure is is basically the rate at which your heart is contracting and causing your blood to flow through your arteries. Okay, and the force of your blood and that pressure that is um, being pressed upon your arteries walls is your blood pressure. Some people have higher blood pressure, which is very, very dangerous. And even low blood pressure can be dangerous at some time. Uh, a certain point, okay, because your blood isn't flowing and pumping at the rate that it should be. High blood pressure is much more serious, okay, because it's pumping at a faster rate. 
Then we have um, our diseases, okay? So um, higher blood pressure is basically defined as anything above 140 over 90, okay? And cardiovascular disease is one of the, um, the biggest causes of death in the U.S., okay? There's a lot of conditions that cause body, fatty de deposits, okay? And these ultimately lead to heart attack and stroke, okay? And so in one of the coronary arteries, they become blocked, and part of the heart muscles, they basically begin to die because there's not enough oxygen flowing through and that causes you to have a heart attack. Okay, and then there's atherosclerosis, which is a condition that kind of leads to that, where you have plaque buildup in the interiors of the arteries, okay, and that causes those blockages that ultimately lead to your heart attacks and your strokes. Um, continue with these diseases, if a blood clot gets stuck in your blood vessel, okay, that's also going to lead to a stroke. And then your brain cells die, um, brain function actually becomes lost when you go through these kinds of things. So huge ways to avoid cardiovascular disease is um, avoid smoking, um, exercise regularly, um, and Basically, take care of yourself. Eat well. Okay, you're not. You don't want to eat things that are going to be bad for you. Okay, or else that's going to lead to those fatty deposits. Okay, so that's the end of section one.